and welcome back to Planetcraft. I'm Natalie and hopefully you can hear me all okay. If there are any problems, please let me know. If you have any questions throughout this stream, then just drop them into the comments. So today I should be able to see comments from YouTube, Twitch and Facebook. So I just wait for a few of you to come into the room. So today we're doing a spooky card with a bit different, so we're going to be doing some spray work. I've done some die cutting already, and then we are going to be doing cutting by colour. So, hi Sally, hi Tracy, hi Carol, hi Deb. And excuse me because I'm going to sneeze in a minute, it's not good. <laughs> hi Thea. What I have so far is I have done one sheet already which has the Distress Mica sprays on it. So I've used Jack O' Lantern, Flickering Candle, and on the purple side we have not just any purple, we have our hocus pocus which is what has that lovely mica shine to it and i've used the new distress spray <laughs> distress spray stain when i put my teeth in in villainous potion okay so with those i've blasted them dry so that we can have them ready and let's get another sheet so i'm using the paper me and paper paper mill direct or media card what is wrong with me today can't get my words out. Now I want one side of this to be our background. So I'm going to be going sort of all out bright colours and mix. And the other side I want to have so that it's blacks and greys in different shades. Hi Corrine. Oh yes, bless you. I saw you having trouble with the internet. So, what I'm going to do is for this left hand side, I'm going to use the colours that I've already used for these so that I get a nice colourful background because I'm going to be working with a black die cut over the top. So I'm going to try and shake these all up so that they're all ready to go. go for it. So I tend to go light to dark but you can do whatever way you want to go. Now what I would say is when it comes to the purple, purple is quite overpowering so less is more. <laughs> and I'm going to take this down this edge as well so we're getting a bit of a Dark image. And let's go back to that yellow to fill in the gaps. So anywhere that looks like it's a little bit white, we can go in with some yellow. Okay. So with those done, I can put those away. And I'm going to pull out my empty tomb. I love the names of these. Now up the top I'm going to put lots of that colour. Down towards the bottom I wanted to get lighter. This will become apparent when we actually start all of our cutting. So to fade it out I'm just going to grab some water and spray. I don't mind if it pulls in some of that purple as well. It can look quite funky. And I'm also going to do a little bit up here just to get it up to those edges. So, how are you all? Wow, well done. 
Well done, Carol. I did see something online, but it was one of those moments where I was doing something else at the time. So, turn the heat gun on. I'm angry at my heat gun, so I can get those watermarks in here as well. So it gets a bit more texture into it. spend all that time watching paint work. <laughs> I'm going to do a little bit of blotting. Now if you are doing this on your own, in your own, in your own kind of time frame, then what I would suggest is rather than heating it with a heat gun, try and let it air dry or use it on a cooler setting because you'll keep more recolour that way. Okay. Now that I've blotted off the excess, I'm going to set that one to one side. Now, all the ink that you have in your tray, don't just wipe it away. You can actually use that to watercolour with. And like pop that down there. So the other advantage of doing that, of course, is everything is protected. Sure that there's no shiny bits because otherwise potentially you could take that into your machine and we don't want that. The other thing to do is if you are going to be using this in your skin cut like I'm going to be doing is try and let it dry overnight as well because it will help your fibres reconnect. As we are going for it live today. So, there are two panels. I've also die cut a Sizzix die, which is this one here. If you want the number, it's 665436. And it's great as a spooky background, but you can also go autumn colours with it. You can go pastels and it will look just as nice. But for a bit of spook, I love it. <laughs> so that's going to be going over on this side. So I'm going to do that next while we're just allowing that card just to sit a little bit more. Yep, yep, definitely. 
everything looks like the page turning. Okay, so I've die cut this with double sided adhesive on the back so that hopefully I can release the release paper and we can apply that straight onto the card. Now what I would say after a bit of fiddling about this morning is some double sided adhesives are going to work better for this die than others. So ideally you want a thinner double sided. So the one that I used successfully in the end was the Wild Spider Roll, which we've used with the scanning cup before. Um, didn't find the clarity one worked as well. We couldn't get the pieces to release. It's that little bit thicker. But just be patient with it takes a little bit of time weeding this one as well because obviously you've got all these little pieces that you need to take out so just be patient it took me about 15 minutes <laughs> to sit here and weed this and as you can see in some places it's cut through the backing and in other places it hasn't so hence Reading it was such an interesting challenge. <laughs> okay, and we're getting there slowly. So just work from the outside and work inwards. That way, we shouldn't lose any pieces. There we go. We get there eventually. Now, with any die cut, I'm just going to let that rest for a moment. Just one little piece in there, I might pull out. Just see if I can get to that. Get them. There we go. You can try to get them all, but there's so many little, little pieces. <sighs> so I'm just going to pop that onto my background, like so. Doesn't matter if you don't get it quite straight, because we're going to trim up to that edge anyway. Now we can get our trimmer or your scissors and we're just going to trim up to that edge of the die cut. Do do. Then I can show you the file that I have on my scanning cut, which is a fun one. So the file I've used is from Design Bundles and it actually comes as JPEGs and PNGs, but they did include an EPS preview. Now, EPS is like the really older version of the SVG file. So, if your software is capable of opening SVGs, in most cases, it can open EPSs. The only exception to that rule, believe it or not, is Canvas. So, if you have Inkscape, if you've got Affinity, Illustrator, Cold or they will all open EPS files. Okay. So hopefully by the time I finish cutting this out, my card should be back ready for cutting. So what I would say is, if you're double-sided, you'll have like a release paper. If you put that to one side, you can pop that over the top and burnish your leaves down at this stage. But just for now, that'll do. So let's get my cutting mat. And onto here, I'm going to put my pieces of card. And I'm going to, again, move that in just a fraction so that I can use all of that card and I'm going to pop the black up to there too and 
Now, in addition to that, I am going to need some white. I'm just going to pull out a white comb. That should be enough. I'm getting mucky fingers. <laughs> so I'm just going to pop that on there, like so. Now, before I go too far, because I don't want that mic transferring anywhere else, I will clean my hands. Uh, how did Ian get on yesterday? He got on fantastically. He's really enjoying it. Oh, that's okay, Sia. <laughs> Name you, love it. Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> but yes, he, he's really liking it and he's enjoying driving around and finding his feet, which is good. Okay, so let's go close cam. Yeah, the, the Sizzix die is actually one of my favourites. It gets used for all kinds of things. It's really good for if you just want a texture in the background. It's quite good for, for just popping that little bit of a, a sheer layer over. It also works really well if you cut it out of um, transparent paper or vellum. And let's get my pencil and we can oh, get the right button. Not got my glasses on today, it's not good. <laughs> so we are going to go to retrieve data and I'm going to pull it down off the Wi Fi and hopefully this works. <sighs> she says, let's try that again because it's been dense. Let's go back home. Naughty campus. Come on, campus. Let's try that again. Do do do. There we go. What's your favourite favourite Sizzix die? That one. The the leafy twigs. Definitely. Because it's Followed by, um, the, I've got a little set of um, houses that I'm going to be using a lot in the next month. And uh, they're really versatile because you can go for pretty much through all the seasons with them. So I did like a, a new home card for um, Rinia. So, retrieve data. And let's try again. Hopefully now it'll behave. There we go. So you can see up in this corner here we've got a little drawing one. And that's there for like my reference. So we can take that bit out immediately. Now we have all these other sections. And at the moment they may not be the right size. So I thought it would be really good to talk about how we can resize. And we're going to go select all. Okay. Now at this point, if we were to resize that, because it's close to the edge, it's going to very quickly go, nope. So we're going to need to move all these elements into the middle of that mat. Okay. We can then go object edit and group. So by grouping it, we can, we're then telling the machine that actually you need to do this calculation to everything that is selected rather than just one thing. We're going to go resize. And we're going to take that up a little bit. Like so. Okay. Now, I'm going to go OK and I'm going to ungroup it. This is important because we are going to want to move these pieces around our mat to get them into the right places. We are going to want to move those individually, so you must do that on group. We 
we're going to go OK. We're going to click off it. OK again. And we're going to do our background scan. now we can see our shapes and it's probably a little bit too dark to see everything we're working with so if we go to our little spanner we can make our scans lighter because we can see in real life what those look like anyway so we know that we can roughly go oh that lighter area is just in that corner there so we can put that there now we have two sets of what looks like a ghost and one is slightly bigger than the other. So this is where you're going to want to have canvas open so that you can refer back to your original file. And this is where colour comes in useful too. So I've coloured my canvas file so that I can see what needs to go where. So our bottom little ghosty shape is actually going to be cut out of white. So if I tap on that one, you're going to see that all that white group gets selected. And we know that that's got to go over onto our white card, like so. Now, if I get that one there, I'm going to pull this one out for a moment because we're probably not going to cut that one yet because there just isn't enough room on the map. So if we go to edit, we can delete that for now. And all that's deleting out from is from the, what's in the current memory. So up on the cloud, all these elements are still there. So we don't have to keep resending when we're deleting items. We have an outline of our glass here too. And again, I think for that one, I'm just going to delete it for the moment. This is our cocktail and we want that to be purple. Our witch's hat, we want to be orange, but we want it to be kind of lighter orange. So I'm going to bring it down to this middle area. We have our darker orange section just there. So that needs to go up towards the top where it's darker. We have a lighter orange section it's going to go in there our ghost here is going to come down this little tiny section is actually on the witch's hat so I'm going to put those two there that's the black stem of our glass so we can bring that down too And come into the middle where it's a bit lighter because that's the highlights on our glass stem now with these bits here this is supposed to be the lightest grey so what I'm going to do is have a little shuffle around so that's going to go here I'm going to move that a little bit darker so that that can fit in in our lighter grey like so. Now these bits are our bubbles in our cocktail. So ideally we want those to be kind of lighter if possible. Now if for whatever reason you can't get it to fit in a lighter area, what you might want to do is actually rotate. So if we go into object edit, rotate and we're going to pop it down so it can go down into there. So it's going to pick up some of the purple, but not lots of purple. And finally we have our dark shadow bit, which we can cut right from where it goes, dark, dark on that edge. Now that of course means that we have loads of other spaces that we can actually use um, with our design to actually create our sentiment as well. So, if we go OK, and OK again, OK again, 
and we're going to get add pattern text and we're going to go for a nice bold font now if we were to put boo at the moment that would do it as one object so what we actually want to do is split it up so we're going to have a b an okay and set add pattern text o okay set now because we've already got that o rather than going through that process again we can use our duplicate button and put a number up to two and we have boo now it's just a matter of where we can fit those characters so i'm going to put one in the purple one in the orange and i was hoping to get one in the gray so let's see if we use our rotate function maybe we can get that to fit a bit better there we go and we can go okay 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 now i'm going to use my black blade for this because we're using all media card it's that little bit thicker make sure that everything is pressed down onto your mat that there's no debris in the way that's going to make your blade jump and we'll go from there i'm getting lovely sparkly fingers let's go okay and we're going to go to cut so make sure half cut is off I've got my pressure on minus nine because I find that's what gives me the best cut for my blade. And let's just go. Uh, have I seen the new Tim Holtz dice? Yes, I have. They're on my wish list. <laughs> <laughs> and good morning, Rachel. Uh, yeah, the cowgirl hat and boots. Your, your uh, mum showed me those when they came. And I was like, don't show those to me. Okay, so because we've got little bits here, it's snagged it a little. But that's okay, we can live with it for what it is. Doo -doo -doo. So the set that I'm, well, the character I'm using is actually one from a set, so it's a load of spooky cocktails. Because I do love a cocktail. <laughs> so I'm still breaking in a new update, which is 1.62. So I'll let you know once I think it's stable. house kit the oh it's the one with 84 dies in carol actually isn't as small as you think it is whereas the other dies that i was using before are actually quite a bit smaller 
which is going to be really good to play with perspective and things like that. But, um, it's interesting to see how they play off against each other. But in terms of resizing, if you have the final blade, then you can use the tiling function and resize that in there. And then split it up into different mats. If you don't, then um, take it into Affinity and do it in there. You can definitely tell it could have done with waiting overnight, but hey, Harry. to hear that you you are back in the craft room so here's home. let's have a look see what we've got now this is going to be one of those ones where you are going to want to try and keep stuff in groups just to make it a bit easier for you to work out how you're supposed to be building things so i'm going to start off by removing all my white elements first because they're the nice easy ones haven't worked you can recut if you want to I might just because of the size of them we can actually play with some markers which would be fun I have a little bit of hand drawing too Those there. Let's get however I okay, we have two little eyes. Oop. Which is hat pieces, the stem of the glass. And if I can remember all these by the time I actually get around to putting these together, it'd be a miracle. <laughs> I'm just going to get rid of the debris off my mat at the same time. Just so that I can do the next bit. So, let's put my caps up there. And I'll put them in so I don't get confused. Okay. out in the purple but again if you need to be we can do those by hand I don't mind it's only a few little bubbles our little piece for our witch's hat and our dark pieces just struggle to come out there a little bit What I may do is actually skip the little bubbles now that I've seen those cut out and we can use something else instead which would be fun and that's a little bit glitter glue. Oh, let's get my piece of my witch's hat. Again take out the centre of your letters so that you don't get confused when you're trying to reassemble. Oh, 
on the top of the cocktail. So with that done, next time what I'm going to do is pull out, I have it waiting here in the wings, and this is always fun, I have a piece of acetate, so it doesn't have to be a very thick piece of acetate, it's more so to give you the effect rather than anything else. I'm going to stick that in there. And also a piece of blue card. So this is going to form like the outline of our glass where the light's hitting. So you don't want it to be too strong. Okay. Again, make sure that your mat is clear debris and I'm going to pop that right up to the edge of my acetate so I know where the edge is <laughs> otherwise it can be a bit like is it there is it not there the other trick you to do is if you have some low tack tape you can actually go around the outside so that you can see the edge so we're going to go okay home okay retrieve wi-fi I'm just going to bring that all back in again. Now the only two bits I need to keep are this one and this one. So if we drag those down to the bottom, that then means that we can go to Edit, Multi-Select. We're going to tap onto our mat so nothing is selected. We're going to use our Window Select and we're going to drag our arrow key up like so. And go OK, OK. And we can do one big wipe it out and we go okay now we're going to do a background scan again hello trouble you snuck in there <laughs> okay so we have one that looks like it's a double cut. It's actually a really fine outline. So that's what's going to be cut from our blue. And we have just our single outline, which is what's going to be cut from the acetate. So at this point, we can go OK. We're going to go to cut. I can use the same settings. Hopefully my blade will behave. Might need a bit of a clean. Sounds like it's gone a bit mad. Yeah, you did go a bit mad there, didn't you? Let's try that one again, shall we? So, if you find it does that, take the waste out so you can see where you're going next. Now, my acetate looks like it's behaved. That's okay. We can take that off and set that to one side. Ready for assembly. We'll go OK. Back we go. We can delete that one. So edit, delete, OK. And I'm going to move this one across. Go okay, and let's change blade. Let's give this one a rest because I've been doing a lot of work with it and it is gonky. <laughs> there we go. It's a little bit cleaner now. I'll get a little glue applicator around it, usually works. And pop in the vinyl one, get the vinyl one to do the hard work. So remember when we're swapping blade, we change settings. 
that. I'm just going to put that up to the same minus six that it usually be on. And let's go for it. Morning, Tracy. I think he's had to go again. He hasn't said. Or is it just optical illusion? Oh, it was doing so well up to that point. Because it's a really fine outline. Let's see if I can just pull it back a little. It might be okay. There's just one bit it hasn't quite got through. But I'm going to fix that in a minute. It's a tiny, tiny piece. Mm. Let's unload the mat. And then we can do a little snipping. So this is going to be one of those ones where you want a really steady hand. Just because of how Fine, this outline is. There we go. Fine as fine can be. So let's start to build up our pieces. I know what I did wrong. Ah, oh, well. <laughs> Silly Natty. <sighs> what a mistake it didn't make. It doesn't matter. So let's build these up. I want to pop a little bit of glue. So when we're using thin things like this, I prefer to use things like um, the Stick to 3D PVA or the water glue. Something that has a bit of a fine nozzle to it. Just be aware that if you do get glue onto the distress card underneath, it can reactivate it. So be sparing so it doesn't squidge. I'm not going to go like so. And we have section so that's going to have a little bit of a gap in there like so so it looks like you have your rim then we have the stem of our glass now at this point you need to start thinking about actually layering this onto your card but you don't want to stick it too much just yet because our ghost actually wraps around our little glass. So I'm going to go up a bit of an angle. I'm going to have that piece just there and the stem can go just down here. Now with our stem you can actually pop that just underneath and let's layer up our ghost next. A little bit there, a little bit around there, just there. It's going to be a longer one today, isn't it? Who thinks I can get this done in the hour? So we have a oh, little bit of a shadow layer. So you should see just a little shadow behind a ghost. Like so. 
Now if you want to make that even more pronounced, you can just use offset to take that back layer out further. I was quite subtle in mine, so that when it goes on the card, you're just going to get that little hint of the shape. Now we have our two little arm pieces, as much as ghosts have arms. <laughs> and again, I can stick that one down. I think this poor little wrinkle just give it a little tug, but then usually that will fix it. And again. So this one actually wraps around the glass, which starts to give us an idea for where our ghost is going to go. So our ghost lines up just there. We then have our eye pieces. Let's pop those on. So they're actually made up of three layers. And the more off an angle you, you put these, the more funky they're going to look. So I don't think you've got to get it perfect. So there's those. Then we've got our two little, little flat circles that we're going to. tiny tiny bits of glue on so hopefully you can see that okay now we're going to use a sticky pencil to just place those on like so now in my original the big eye goes on the left have a look so in the original we've got kind of this bit slides underneath which is why I said don't stick anything just yet and it kind of wraps around the stem like so so we put those there before we stick his eyes make him look too drunk <laughs> okay then the lighter gray pieces are actually shadow pieces so we have that one that goes just underneath where this wine glass is so we can actually layer that up there Maybe I'm just going to adjust that slightly, just so that I goes over. Can we? It's not drying quick enough for me today. Come on. Do -do -do -do. Add this one over the top. Now, if you want to put a bit of dimension in it at this point, you can do. So, 
may I have here some glue dots now with the glue dots I'm going to put that up this edge here like so so these have a little bit of dimension to them but not much but when it comes to the other side we can actually pop it up with a little bit of 3d foam so I'm going to use some of the waste because that's going to help support it a little bit better I think off here Do -do -do. and because it's nice and thin we can actually bend this around our shape that off for a minute stick that down onto there carefully like so so now that we've done that bit and we can stick that onto our card so you're going to want to put a little bit of glue on the back of our ghost too Now with the stem of our glass we want to kind of free that up into there and then our tail is actually going to wrap over the top like so. So then all you really need to do is just grab a little foam pad and pop it under the stem. So you've got quite a big area to play with so you don't have to have a, a particular shape foam dot. I'm just going to go for a square one here that there I'm just going to stick that down so that's that one done now with this little arm I'm going to have the same issue that I want it to pop over the top here so again I'm just going to use a thin bit of our 3d foam that we can actually wrap around Gently encourage this to go around the corner, like so. Peel off that backing. Now we want to offer that up to the wine glass, so let's turn that round so it's a little bit easier. round underneath and over the top. So I'm just going to give that a little press there and like so. Now you might find that you want to pop a little bit of glue underneath just to support that what I'm doing but I think for that one it's going to be fine. So as I said before, we've got this little highlight that we want to put up here. And obviously that's another thin strip. So I'm going to go for another one down here. The foam pads I got from Amazon. Don't make it too long. I'm just going to curl that back just so I can snip that a little bit, like so. Don't waste. <laughs> and let's just peel that off the back. Now there 
is a witch's hat that goes on there. Which actually comes off of our cocktail glass. Which is going to be interesting to see how that's going to build up. So that's going to go across there. And I think for ease, I'm going to cheat a little. So just because something's made one way doesn't mean you have to make it that same way. I'm going to pop a little bit of glue just on this edge. And I'm going to lower that onto the base of my witch's hat. Like so. Now I did cut all the shadow pieces for the hat. But I think, given time, I'm just going to do any of that shading by hand. So let's pop the lip band on there. Then, as we did our little yellow set piece, let's get that popped out through the middle. So that you can see that black underneath. So if you have something like this where it hasn't quite got through where you want it to go, I'm just going to get my pokey tool and poke through the middle of it. Now watch your fingers when you do this just because we don't want any accidents, there we go, nice and easy, and I'm just going to do a little drop of glue into the middle, now it's probably going to squidge up through the middle of this one but I don't mind, now let's get my pokey tool, and I'm just going to move that into place, like so. And we're starting to get there. So that means where we've got our purple going into our purple, we're going to break it up with that pop of orange. So again, I'm just going to put a little bit along that bottom edge. And that can sit across both of those, like so. Just give it a little tap that way. Now we just need our boo. So what you can do is have this already cut out from some 350 GSM and layer that up too. So you get some nice chipboard letters. But I think for this one, I'm just going to go and pop that on there. So we only need a little bit of 3D foam on those outside ends. So I'm just going to snip those. Snip that down again. Just that bit. And then because it's going to be going up onto this raised section here, we can just use a bit of glue. Then wherever it happens to land, it will stick eventually. So I hope that's given you a different idea of how to work with files. And mm, also give you the, the inspiration to go and find unusual file types like EPS and actually use those too. So now with our two O's we can just use regular pads. One there, and then I'm going to snip one in half, I think, just for the top and bottom. And I will come back and have a look at comments as well. So that will do for that bit. Base knot. That will do for that bit. And let's stick that one on. So when it comes to this next one, we're going to be heading off the edge. So 
So I will save that for when I actually put that onto a card in a minute. Let's pop that there. We can release the sticky on one bit so that we can get it on there, I think. Let's have a go. So I hope you've enjoyed today's little project and I'd love to see what you all make with it. So sprays don't have to be messy. EPSs don't have to be outdated and not useful anymore. I'm only just over look at that. I'm getting better at this. <laughs> so what I will do is look around for comments in a minute. And any questions. the paper off this one. Do -do -do. Do -do -do. There we go. I'm going to grab a white gel pen and go for a bold one. And then anywhere where it's looking like it's getting a little bit lost, we can use highlights to actually highlight what we've actually got with our word. And we can use the same with any shadow areas with a black gel pen or a darker shade of the colour that you're shading. consistent so once you do it on one do it on the other and as our light is coming from this side you're going to want to pop a little bit on there and I did say I would do the bubbles by hand so here we go I'm going to do some little white bubbles the, the tiny ones now if we get a lilac paint pen I'm going to just do a few bigger ones and that's so that I can add white highlights onto those so they actually look like bubbles. Let's pop one here because it shows up nice on the purple. Now just be aware that when you're using a gel pen or paint pen that it can sometimes reactivate the distress underneath so you do get like a tint to your colour. It's not always a bad thing, but I'm just going to pop a little bit just there on that one. And just around here. So it has like a 3D effect. Now I can do a little dot of highlights. And the only other bits that I didn't really put on were the shading for the arms, which I think may be too much, but let's have a look. Yeah, come on. Let's go for it. And then we will call it a day, it's that. So before I do, uh, so hi on Twitch. And you're always welcome to go back and watch Nikki. And as you're back in the craft room, I hope you get to play with your foil shield and new goodies later. And yeah, I think I'm happy with that. 
looks cute <laughs> so there's a few different ones in the collection and it just so happened that I thought the little ghost was cute I, I went with that one but of course the bigger you cut him the more detail you can put into him on oh, something like this card you can go simpler but if you want to put it on a t-shirt or a canvas then you can go really really detailed and have lots of fun so what i will try and do later is pop up a photo of that so you can see it up close and also if um you want to swap it up a bit and make your life a little easier in some ways you can put googly eyes in place of his eyes or you can use glossy accents to actually make them shiny but um since we had our, our little um catastrophe with the shelf the glossy accents aren't on it anymore so <laughs> we took a bit of weight off the shelf <laughs> so the only thing up there's the sprays at the moment so thank you Thea, Nikki, Carol, Joyce, and Tracy and Tracy, and I think Deb's still with us. Hope you've enjoyed that, and tomorrow I might do some paper pricking with you, so that you can see that working and how we can use our four quill designs to actually paper pick, which would be cool. Thank you all for joining me. If you have any questions, then don't forget to go into the group, which is Scan and Cut and Paper Craft Courses, Classes and Workshops by Planner Craft. I do try to put lots of links up to files in there, both free and paid ones. And I will see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye.